Okay, we do have notes, so hopefully your notes are still out. If not, go ahead and grab them. Green on the left, notes on the right. We don't have very many notes. It's only one major thing we're going to talk about. Okay, last week we talked, and it was kind of the start of this whole chapter, we talked about, um, we talked about compound events. And compound events required us uh, in some ways to, um, to talk about sample space and required us to use some extra work to find out sometimes what you know, the probability would be, all right, for a compound event. Well, let me uh, tell you that today's lesson is kind of funny because we almost started the chapter with something, and we're going to end this chapter with something that is linked to the start of the chapter, all right? This thing we're talking about today is called the fundamental counting principle, all right? So in your book, here's what they say. Well, first of all, fundamental counting principle, everyone? Let's try that one more time. Fundamental counting principle. So here's what your book says. This uses multiplication of the number of ways each event in an experiment can occur to find the number of possible outcomes in a sample space. Okay, now that's kind of wordy, but I'm gonna explain what it means here in a bit. So again, use multiplication of the number of ways each event in an experiment can occur to find the number of possible outcomes in a sample space. Now, this doesn't make any sense to you right now, but go ahead and write this down. Four times three equals 12, all right? Math facts, right? All right, now here's what I wanna do. I wanna take you back in time a little bit and talk about a previous lesson. And when I start talking about this, I bet you guys will remember. In that lesson I was referring to earlier, there was a problem that gave us ingredients to make a sandwich. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We get all excited. <laughs> yeah, so remember there was what? There was bread, there was cheese, and there was meat. Yeah, we all remember. You guys don't remember math, but you remember about making a sandwich. Sandwiches are fun. Okay, okay. so here's what I want to do. I'm going to quickly just do that problem over again, okay? And, and believe me, I, we're going to come back to it here. But here's what it was, remember? Step one was we were going to take the first event, if it's a game. I called it the first element of the sandwich. And that was, in, and then it was talking about the type of bread. So if you remember right, what were, there were what, three types, right? There was white. white yeah, white, oh, that's right. We went, remember, we didn't want to do two W's. So we went first and last letter. So white. And then wheat, right? And rye. Okay, I hope I space them out enough. Maybe a little too much on the edge here. And then remember what we did was, was we took the second event or the second element, and which was the cheese, right? What kind of cheese? Cheddar. cheddar you guys are ex experts at this. Are you kidding me? You got great memories. Okay, cheddar, cheddar and Swiss, yes. So, um, Two, right? Two of them. So remember, that's when we broke it off in two branches. So cheddar and Swiss. And then we did it for each one, right? Cheddar, Swiss. I'm going to really go over here where it gives me some room. Cheddar, Swiss. And then remember, the next step was, of course, the third element, or sometimes you just say repeat step, uh, step one and two. And yeah, this was the meat, right? And what was the meat? You guys are, are you Rosie? kidding me? Rosie? Look at that. I'm getting hungry. Ham, turkey, and then remember roast beef, we already had an R for rice, so we went RB. Uh -huh. And that must have been where I didn't know that. That must have been where Arby's came from. RB, roast beef, right? Maybe. Oh, a light bulb this one. Talk about sandwiches and food, you guys get all excited. Look at the end of the year, I'm learning more about my first period class. All right, so we got ham, turkey, roast beef. Ham, turkey, roast beef. Three branches, ham, turkey, roast beef, and ham, turkey, roast beef. Now in that lesson, 
we talked, there were some problems on your worksheet that talked about sample space, right? I said, guys, the sample space is basically going down each stem or each branch of the tree diagram. And then I said, on the problems that ask you not what the sample space is, but how many outcomes or how many is in the sample space, all you had to do was say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, right? All you had to do is count the bottom branches because if you go down every single branch here, it'd go to the bottom. And so there, in this case, were 18 possible outcomes of different, 18 different sandwiches you can make on this one, okay? Now, let me go ahead and show you what we're going to do today. Today's not about sample space, okay? If it asks you about sample space, meaning the different types of sandwiches, writing them out, you, you would have to still do the tree diagram and get your results. Today is about this kind of problem, meaning how many outcomes are there, okay? So here's, let me put this in perspective. Here's what the fundamental counting principle says. Step one, how many, not what, but how many different types of the first event are there? There's three. How many are the second event? Two cheeses. And how about the third? Take a look at that, see if you can find something out. And then you just add two. All right, any, any, any volunteers? You multiply the numbers? Agree, disagree? Agree. Three times two is? Six. Six times three is? Eighteen. Fundamental counting principle. That's where four times three equals twelve. Three times? Three breads. Times two, right? And that six is the number of, of course, if you were only making like a cheese melt, right? We talked about during that lesson, six total cheese melts. But then you add the three different types. Well, you have six different types of cheese melts. But if you add three different types of meat to each of those, that's what gives you the 18. So that's why the fundamental counting principle works. Let's do a couple of problems off your homework. Okay. Let's go ahead and make sure you're on the 9-5. Now, before we even do the 9-5 worksheet, here's what I want to do. We need to alter this worksheet. We're going to try to do it as fast as possible because I don't want to really waste time, but we, I need to make sure that I... The, the copies came out bad. Bless you. The copies came out bad. So here's what I want you to do. For number four, okay, we're obviously they're really, really dark. Let's start with the first one. Please listen carefully. I'm going to pretend like this is an old-fashioned clock. Okay, that will help us a little bit. So go ahead and you can see A. Let's go ahead and extend the lines there. And if you want it, you can put A again. You don't have to. Now here's what I want you to do. You can kind of see the light line going down. That's actually an accurate line at what would be on a clock, 6 o'clock, the bottom of the clock. Go ahead and put a line down there. This whole section here is section B. Then go at the center of the circle where the spinner is and go to the, to the left. You can kind of actually see it a little bit too. Go to where it would be the nine o'clock. Okay, straight to the left. And we have this section is section C and this section up here is section D. So A, B, C, D, broken up in that way. Now on this spinner, let's again, start at the center of the, the circle there. All right, where the spinner is attached, go straight up to 12 o'clock, right up at the top. Okay, um, as a matter of fact, probably should have started with C. If you want to extend the C's here, and that is obviously C. Now you see where the 12 o'clock is? Okay, halfway between the 12 o'clock and the three o'clock. These two lines here, put another line. As a matter of fact, you can kind of see this lighter l section of the pie here, for example, the spinner. Just go ahead and make a straight line extending just like that. 
So here's what we have. At 12 o'clock, if you go to the right, it's section A. You go to the next section, that's section B. Then we have section C. This next section we already created was section D. And then here's what I want you to do. You can kind of see this extend at 9 o'clock here. So you can see that little lighter piece of pie there. Extend that. This section right here after D is section E. And then this section up here is section F. Now this one, if you look very closely, you can actually see the different sections. If you go to 3 o'clock here, if you go to 12 o'clock, but go to the left a little bit around the circle, around the, the circumference of the circle, you can kind of see the lighter shaded part. If you go just to the left a little bit, you can see where it turns really dark. Section that off like that. This section here is section A, this big section. Now we can see where the letter C is. So extend that, obviously that's C. Between This big section between A and C is B. And the big section on this side, from C all the way up to the, where A starts, that is section D. All right, so I want to make sure I go over that with you before I give you your homework to do. All right, sorry about the bad uh, copies. The cop machine just came out that way. All right, let's get back. Let's get back to the focus of the fundamental counting principle. All right, so here's what I want us to do. All right, let's on this side, let's take a look at uh, number seven. Let's check out number seven. Now listen, this first part, you, I tell you what, um, now nah, you don't have to do, okay? But I do want you to watch. I'm, all I'm gonna do is draw a quick tree diagram. It'll take me 30 seconds, all right? Remember with this, selecting one sweater from three different sweaters, okay? Um, if I take a look at that, um, I don't know, let's let's say they were different colors. I'm gonna make it up, all right? So the first element, the three different sweaters was uh, blue, red, and green. And then we are pairing it up with a pair of pants. And say, let's say there are, are jeans and khakis. So jeans and khakis, jeans and khakis, okay? So. Total of six different outcomes. Now we know what it is. Now, here we go. For our note purposes, I want you guys to write down. Step one is to find the first element. In this case, there are the different sweaters. Find out, of course, how many different types there are, in this case, three. And I want you to write down the number. Step two, go to the next type of event or element. In this case, they're the different pairs of pants. Of course, find out how many there are. There are two. And I want you to write down that number. Now, step three, we'll put this as a little side note. You can put a little asterisk next to it. Put down the word repeat with a question mark. Because it might be, right, we already know there might be more than two different type of elements, two different things that are affecting our outcome. Okay, in this case, there was only two. Now, we'll call this step four. Multiply it out. Three times two is six. Now, step five, here's what I want you to do. The directions do say 
Use the fundamental counting principle to find the total number of outcomes for each situation. Bless you. So we're going to go ahead and write the word outcomes. Now let me go ahead and simplify this because all of you guys, oh, that's a lot of work for something so simple. Here, In the end, here's the only work you need to show because most of this is finding and mental math. The only work you need to show is that. I want, listen, this is very important. I want you to show me the math problem because I want to make sure that you understand where our, I want to make sure that you're getting the correct numbers, okay, from the problem. And I do want you to make sure you put your units on there. So three times two equals six outcomes. That's all you have to do. The rest is just mental math, just reading it and understanding it and writing it down, okay? Any questions about this? Okay, here's one I want you guys to try. I want you to try the very next one, problem eight. Problem eight. All right, go. Anyone need more time? Okay. I'll give you a few more seconds, then I'm going to have you guys share. All right. Turn to your neighbor and share. Go. Here we go. So if I go through the steps, step one, find our first element. Well, different types of fruit. How many are there? There's four. I'm going to go and write it down. What's our next element? Uh, d drinks. How many are there? Five. I don't see any others, so we're done. Four times five equals 20 outcomes. All right, questions? Okay, I want to do one more, one more type of problem, um, and it's just, it, it's pretty easy. It's just a little bit of an extension here, and that is, let's take a look at problem number three. So, same idea, same directions. It says tossing a quarter, rolling a number cube, and tossing a dime. Now, here's the only, I'm going to go through the steps. Here's the only difference. Okay. First, in this case, it is an event, not an element, but an event. We're actually playing a game. So the first event is tossing a quarter. Remember how many are there? Well, that means how many outcomes from tossing a quarter. We actually have to do a little extra thinking. So how many outcomes from tossing a quarter? Two. Yeah, two. You see that? The second event is rolling a number cube. So I say how many different outcomes from rolling a number cube? Six. Six. And then there is a third one on this one. We repeat it. Tossing a dime, again, two. We multiply them out. Two times six is 12. 12 times two, 24. Don't forget our word outcomes. So same idea. Write your problem out. Make sure you have outcomes. But the only difference is you have to actually do a little extra thinking while you're writing them down. Because it's not saying exactly how many there are. Okay, I'm going to have you guys try one similar to that. Any questions? Okay, here's the one I want you guys to do. Problem number six. Number six. Go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. All right. Thirty seconds. Go ahead and share. Go. All right, here we go. So, what you should have had, first event is rolling a number cube. There were, we just had that earlier, six total outcomes. And then, selecting a letter from this word right here. Obviously, it's tiger, but that doesn't matter. What matters is, is selecting a letter. There are one, two, three, four, five different letters there. That's it, we multiply. 30 total outcomes. Okay, questions on that? Okay, now before before I let you guys get going on this, okay, go up to the top. I want to talk about number one and clarify it, okay, because there's some vocab in that that some of us may not be familiar with. Here we go. Choosing a local phone number if the exchange is 398 and each of the four remaining digits is different. So, here's what I recommend. This is one probably starts on this page with probably the hardest one out of all of these, okay? So, get some practice with some of the others. But here's what I want all of you to write down where it's, it's a little easier for you. First of all, here's what it's asking. Let me clarify. The first three numbers, okay, that's the exchange. It's 398, so it's like a regular phone number. It's 398. No, digit, 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 all right? That's a number, okay? It's not talking about an area code or anything. It's just, that's the number. Now, I do want to talk about this. Over the years, I've realized that a lot of my seventh graders does not know what that word really means. If I asked you guys digits, what's a digit, guys? A number, a number and you would be wrong. That's like me saying, guys, letters... Our, our words. Well, I mean, maybe a few of them, but let me give an analogy. Letters make up, you use letters to make up words. You use digits to make up numbers. All right. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are learning a lot today. Okay, so let's talk about this as a class. What are the digits? in our number system. Be very careful. One through nine. You are wrong. One through zero. Zero through nine. The number 10, What? which digit is that? Zero. One and zero. I kind of triggered it. It's two digits make up the number 10. And of course, two or more digits make up the rest of the numbers in our number system. Okay. So, and you say, well, but Mr. Wilkins, that's a digit, but that's a number. Well, yes. And that is a letter, and that's a, that's a word, right? Uh, Same kind of idea. Uh, All right? So, yes, yeah, some numbers are, are, some digits are numbers, but also some letters are words. Okay? So, there are the exceptions, right? But, I mean, for the most part, letters make up words, digits make up numbers. Okay? Now, I do also want to point out that this last part here, Read that carefully because that will affect your total outcome. So be very careful with that. Okay? All right. Yes. Good job. It is different. All right. All right. Fundamental counting principle. <laughs>